Acts out of the church and uh, Timothy. Well, that's in the future. I'm getting ahead of myself. Ephesians chapter number 6 tonight. And uh, we're only going to read preach out of four verses. I was going to take us all the way down to uh, verse number 9. But by the time I got done with four verses, I had five, six pages of notes. And I said, all right, let's just cut it off and we'll preach them next week. So uh, we're going to start off or uh, start off chapter 6 tonight. The Bible says in verse number 1, Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Miss Kendall, I'm preaching to you tonight. <laughs> Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Amen. Amen. For this is right. <laughs> Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Adults, I'm preaching to you tonight as well. Okay? Verse number five, uh, verse number four. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Lord God, we come to you tonight thanking you for being so good to us, Lord. I thank you for the fact that I was raised. Lord God, I thank you for teaching me and training me. Lord God, I thank you for what you've done this morning. Lord God, I thank you for the wonderful food that we ate this evening. Lord God, I thank you for the sweet spirit that was felt this morning in our service. Lord, now we need you to do it again. Lord, I pray that you would help me to preach. Lord, I pray that you would hide me behind the cross and give me the words to say. Lord, I pray that you would help your people. These things we ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, Paul has just finished up talking about husbands and wives. It's what we looked at last week, the relationship between uh, married couples. And now he moves on to the subject of raising children. Uh, now, I know what you, some of you are thinking. And you may not admit this out loud, but it's in the back of your mind. You ain't got no children, so how are you going to tell me to raise a child? Well, I may not have any children, but I was raised. Amen. And being raised taught me the what's and what nots and how, and how not to raise. Amen. Amen. Uh, everybody that's been raised ought to learn something from their raising. Amen. Amen. And also, I've Amen. also been youth pastor for the past seven years uh, before I took this pastorate. And uh, so I've got a little experience dealing with young people and dealing with uh, the problems of the home between parents and children. Uh, so I am qualified, amen, even though I don't have children uh, for those two reasons. But And you say, well, we don't have any children. No, but this still needs to be preached, amen. amen. We've got one that's got, that's got children, amen, Miss Brooke. She's got a, and I'm not just preaching to Brooke. I'm preaching to everybody mm -hmm. uh, because there may become a day when you do have a child. You say, I'm 70 years old. Sarah had one at 90. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. As we know. As we know. Just kidding. But there are people in here that are not married yet that would like to have children one day. So that's why this is important that we do teach on these things. Plus, it's just where we fell at tonight on the Bible. So somebody needs it. Amen. Amen. Number one. We're going to talk about again at verse 1. The Bible says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. He starts out by talking about children and parents. And the first thing that Paul says in chapter 6 is, Children, obey your parents. That word obey means to comply with commands. Kendall, if mommy says go wash the dishes, what are you supposed to do? That's right. Are you supposed to wait 5 or 10 minutes and then go wash them? Or are you supposed to wash them when she says wash them? That's right. You can tell. Mommy has been raising her right. Okay? Now, he did not say obey if you agree. I don't know about y'all, but when I was a kid, Mama and Daddy told me something that I didn't agree with. I didn't always obey right away. Let's be honest tonight. How many of you did that? Amen. Some of you grew up in the generation where I know you'd get smacked down and you get the smack down That's laid right. on you if you did not listen. Right. But as I've said before, how do you know that? Because you tried it. <laughs> so nobody knows they're going to get smacked down until they get smacked down I mean, you've tried it and it did not work and now you, you knew after that you weren't going to do it again uh, but he did not say obey if they are right he did not say obey if they are living right uh, children it is your job to obey your parents no matter what your parents are doing uh, a lot of people think that if they're uh, dealing with teenagers and things like this they'll come and they'll say well, it's not fair. They're doing this and they know they're not supposed to. How do they expect me to live right and me to do right when they're being hypocrites? And I understand that argument completely. But it doesn't matter what the parents are doing. The parents are to be uh, in charge of the home and it is a child's job to obey whether they agree or not. Whether they're living right or not, it is the child's job to obey. I can take you to a perfect example in Abraham and Isaac. Abraham brought him up the hill and Abraham was going to sacrifice him. 
Now, if anybody tried that today, what would you tell that child? Don't obey your father. Right? But what did Isaac do? He obeyed his father all the way till his father was standing over top of him with a blade and he was going to cut his son until God said, wait, I've supplied a sacrifice. I've supplied a substitute. So we are to obey our parents even if they're in the wrong uh, according to the Word of God. And let me ask you this. How long are you a child? You say, until I'm 18. No, that ain't what I'm talking about. How long are they your parents? Forever. So you adults, I'm preaching to you too that are dealing with uh, your parents that, 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 that are not living right, your parents that, that sometimes get on your nerves and they bother you as an adult, amen? And you've got to obey them as well. You've got to respect amen. them as well. Uh, it is the child's job simply to obey the parent no matter what the oh, command dear. is. That's the child. Um, now, if you're being hurt at home, tell someone. Don't obey a command that is not uh, appropriate. You, sh you should obey your parents but if your parents are hurting, you need to tell somebody. Amen. Amen. Uh, he takes it a step further and said, the day is sad, but in the day that we live in, we have to say things like that. He takes it a step further and says, in the Lord. Uh, if Christ is at the center of the home, guess what's going to happen? That child's going to obey. I remember as a child, I used to get in trouble all the time. I was bad. I was bad. And uh, I'd back talk and I'd do all that stuff I wasn't supposed to do. I, 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 if somebody told me to do something, I'd do whatever they told me. I'd do the opposite just to spite them. That's the way I was. I was rebellious. And uh, I had a lot of bitterness and a lot of angerness in my heart. But you know what? There was a lot of issues in my home as well. The, my parents, they were saved. And they would, they would go and they would take me to the preacher's office. And, and, but they would be fussing about I'll tell you a perfect example. Um, I found a videotape that's inappropriate. Let's put it that way. As a child. That was in my dad's uh, um, building. He had a building. He had a bunch of stuff in there. And I started watching that tape. It was something I should not have been watching. But guess where I got it from? Your dad. 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 So if daddy's doing something, you can't get mad at son for doing what daddy does if you're a hypocrite. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 We're, I'm getting ahead of myself. But that's, you see what I'm saying? Now, but they'd take me to the office and, and the preacher would fuss at me and then I'd tell on my parents. See? <laughs> you, and then the preacher would fuss at them. But that's the way that it works. If you're not living right, you can't expect your child to Right. Yeah, well, that's that right. It works that way. Right. Uh, how yep. long should children obey their parents? Uh, until they die. That's how long you should obey your parents. How long are your parents, are your parents, you're always their children. Amen. Uh, the second part of verse 1 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. I love it that Paul does not just stop there and say, <laughs> Alright, you got to obey. No, he tells us why we need to obey. The Bible always gives us a reason why. It's not a confusing thing. He said, obey your parents because it's right. Why should I obey? Because it's the right thing to do, plain and simple. If there was nothing else in this chapter, that would be enough. The fact that God told me to do it because it is right. Amen? Amen. Uh, he said, children obey simply because it's the right thing to do. So many children don't obey because of different reasons. I, I remember as a child, I thought, man, life ain't fair. Why have I got to do that? And this is what we'll talk about in just a minute. But there's favoritism in the home. One child gets treated better than the other. And Amen. when that happens, the child sees it. The child gets jealous. Yeah. And the child doesn't want to obey. But can I tell you, that does not matter. No, it does not matter how they treat your siblings. If one gets treated better than the other, you are still to obey because it is the right thing to do. Amen. doesn't matter if you're 95 in here and your mama's 115 or 125. However old that's got to be in order to have a kid. Y'all get what I'm saying. doesn't matter your age. It, you, and I, I hear it all the time as an adult. People say, yeah, that's their favorite child. They get trained. doesn't matter if that's their... You still are to obey. doesn't matter how old you are. You're still to obey your parents. Boy, that ain't popular, but it's the truth. Um, uh, maybe some believe that their parents are so strict. Man, I used to hate it. I wasn't allowed to be out late. I had to be in the house. That's why I moved out when I was 16. So I could pay my own bills and do what I wanted to do. Boy, if I could move back in with mama and daddy as an adult, I'd do it. Take all that free groceries. Amen. Amen. Right, amen. But at 16, I thought I knew it all. I thought I had everything under control. I figured, you know, I'm, I, I can handle this. And, and I did. The Lord took care of me. But that doesn't mean that I was right. Amen. Right. But they feel like their parents are so strict. Can I tell you, it doesn't, it's good to have a strict home. Now I look back on those things and I'm like, man, thank God they didn't let me hang out with that person. Mm -hmm. Thank God they didn't let me go yes. do this. Amen. Thank God they didn't let me go yep. do that. Thank God they forced me to go to church. Thank God it wasn't a choice. Man, so many people were talking about it. Uh, I can't remember who we were talking about after church. We somebody. And we were talking about how 
uh, oh, it was our visitor that was here. And uh, she said that somebody doesn't didn't want to come to church, but they were raised in church, and she wasn't raised in church, so she didn't understand it. And, and, you know, a lot of people that are raised in church, they're bitter towards their parents for forcing them to come mm -hmm. to church, and now they don't come. But, man, I'm the opposite, man. I, I'm glad I was raised in church because it Amen. kept me out of a lot of trouble. Amen. Man, you know, I never did drugs. Yep. I, never, I, I tasted alcohol one time, but I never got hooked on it. I, I never got really into anything of the world that was un, that was that was uh, unnormal for a teenager to, to, to test out the trial. I'm so glad that I was clean, and I'm so glad that I was right when I got married. And, and it's all because of my parents teaching me and showing me the right things in life. Amen. Amen. We don't look at it that way as a child. When we look at that strictness, we think, man, that ain't fair. Boy, they were raised. They know how to raise you. I promise you that. Some do not want to obey because their parents are hypocrites. I've already said that. And they tell them to one, do one thing, but the parents want to do another. Let me say this. If the movie is not approved for your child to watch it, you ought not to be watching it. Amen. Amen. If your child can't wait. If you say you need to go to bed, then you don't need to be watching it. Right. Amen. Amen. That's There's right. a lot of hypocrisy in a lot of homes. And, and the kids see this, and they, they see that you're a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. And then you get mad when they don't obey. But the truth of the matter is the child is to obey no matter what the parent does. Right. And that's just the way it is. No exceptions. <clears throat> obey your parents because it is right. Okay? Look with me at verse 2. That it uh, honor thy father and mother. Now he goes even a step further. It's not just obey. Now it's honor. And that word honor means to respect. I'll tell you the difference between obey. And this is what I've told uh, kids in children's churches. I've preached this message. Not this message, but these verses to, to kids many, many years. Honor, or obey is when your mama and daddy tells you to do something. And you go do it. Mm -hmm. Respect or honor is when you go do it without being told. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. Mama and daddy says go clean your room, and you choose not to go clean your room. Amen. Shame on you. You ought to be doing those things without being told. Miss Kendall, how old are you? Six. You should clean your room without mom and, mom and daddy telling you to, right? Yeah. Yeah. She sees. She agrees. <laughs> she agrees. I'm preaching to Kendall tonight, amen. <laughs> Y'all adults are off the hook for a minute. Aww, you did without her telling that's you so to? Sweet. Sure did. Good job. Good that's job, good Kendall. Kendall. She honored her mother. Yeah, Amen. That's, Amen. Sweet. Without even, that's what you do. You do things without being told. Right. Um, obeying is doing what you're told, but honoring is doing it without being told. You see, <clears> they <throat> need uh, help. The kids should help them. Yep. A lot of people think, oh, the kids shouldn't do nothing for the parents. That's the way it is. Uh, a child needs chores. Yeah. Yeah. A child yeah. needs responsibility. Yeah. You want to know why everybody's lazy in America today? Because yeah. their parents didn't make them do nothing when uh -huh. they were kids. Yeah. 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 And daddy didn't right. teach them how to cut the grass. And daddy didn't teach them how to do this. And mama didn't teach them how to wash the dish. And now they wonder why their kids won't get out of the house and get a job. It's because you didn't make them then. And when you let them sit there and play video games all day long, what do you expect them to do but to continue doing what they're doing and what they've known all their life? Uh, it's not your parents' job to cater to you. But it is your job to honor them. Amen? Amen. So many people use their parents as a genie, even as adults. I've, I've, seen, I've seen people do that. The only time they want to call daddy is when they need something. Right. Only time they want to call mama is when they now I'm preaching to the adults. Y'all get a hold of yourselves. <laughs> the only time they want to call daddy is when they, or mama when they need something. And I tell you, mom and daddy is not your special genie. It's your job to take care of yourself. Right. Once you get yeah. grown and out of their house, yep. it's your job right. to handle your own Amen. business. It ain't yes. their job to take care of you no nope. more. That's right. That's good for you. <laughs> Even if I love you agree. <laughs> so that's what's wrong. We got a generation of parents, and let's be honest, I blame the parents. Amen. If you're going to allow them to stay in the home and do yep. whatever they want, that's what's going to happen. If you allow Johnny, not a health settler, but if you allow little Johnny <laughs> at 21 years old to not have a job, and y'all have to go to work, but you're going to let him sit and play Xbox all day, what do you expect little Johnny's going to do? I don't know about y'all. But if I had my choice, I'd be doing whatever I wanted to do all the time. And you can't expect a 20-year-old, 18-year-old, 19-year-old not to want that. That's the way that it works. And if y'all are honest, some of you in here, you 65, 70, if you were honest, you want to do what you want to do all the time. You don't get to, but you want to. The reason you don't, get, you don't do it is because you know better. You can't expect someone as young as 17, 18, 19 to know all the rules and the regulations. Uh, that's why they ought not to have all the rights and stuff that they have. Uh, but that's a different message. <laughs> Verse number two again. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment 
with promise. He said, the reason you are to honor your father and mother is because it's a commandment. Yeah. Not only is it right, and if he'd have left it at it's right, that would have been enough. But he said it's a commandment. Mm -hmm. That is the first commandment. Honor thy father and mother. Uh, this is not an option. It's not a choice. It's not a request. It is a commandment from God that we honor our parents. Uh, we must honor our parents or we will answer for it. Notice that there is a reward for obedience. He said to obey because it is right. But he said we'll get rewarded for honoring our parents. There, though, That's mentioned in uh, verse number 3. Look with me. The Bible says that it may be well with thee. He said if you honor your parents. Now he's talking about honor. And he said you ought to obey because it's right. End of discussion. You owe, Now you honor them. That way it's well with you. Have you ever done something good for your parents and you think, man, that felt good? Mm -hmm. Anytime we do something right, that's the way we feel about it. Amen. Even if it's for our parents or if it's for our, whatever it is, uh, we are to do it so that it'll be well with us. My daddy told me all the time growing up, he said, I feel sorry for you if you have kids. He said, as much trouble as you've given me, he said, you know, they say that your kids are going to be ten times worse than you are. That's why we ain't had none. Amen. Thank God. <laughs> The Lord just ain't blessed us with any Thank good. God. But we always feel better when we do right. And, and it, your life is easier when you do right. Man, we, we act like doing right is hard. But the truth of the matter, the Bible says that doing wrong, a sinner's, a sinner's a transgressor's way is hard. Why? Because they've got to avoid God. They've got to avoid conviction. Mm -hmm. They've got to avoid preaching. They've got to avoid uh, all those things in order to do wrong. Whereas... We, when we do right, we ain't got to avoid nothing. We just got to do it. And when you do right, it, it, it's supposed to be easier for a child of God because you got the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. When you honor your parents, it'll make you well. It'll make you feel better about yourself. When you don't honor them, you know what you're going to have when they die? Regrets. I have regrets. Man, y'all know the story I've told all y'all about my mom and how she, she did, my, my real mom. She was on drugs and... Uh, she lived a life of, 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 of wickedness, and that was her choice, and she, she didn't have a lot to do with me. But I remember, and I told somebody this this morning, that as she was lying on her deathbed for three months, man, I cherished that time with my mama. Didn't matter how she treated me. Didn't matter that she left me as a child. All this stuff didn't matter. I had the opportunity to be able to spend some time with my mama. I was able to rub her feet with lotion. I was able to, uh, in origin, oh, I tell you, that story, I told that at her funeral. She, had, she was in a hospice house, and her feet began to hurt, and they began to swell, and they didn't have anything for her there. And uh, so all we had in the room at the time she was hurting was aura gel. And she handed that to me, and she couldn't talk. She said, my feet. She said, put on my feet. Mm. Well, what do you do when you're in that position? I put throw some gloves feet. on. I rub that aura gel, uh, aura gel now, and I rubbed her feet with it to cool them <laughs> and to soothe them. Man, I loved that. I, 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 if I could do that for another three months, I'd do it. You say you're crazy. No, I'd give every I would give it to spend some time with my mama. Amen. But that's what I'm talking about. You don't do those things, you're gonna regret it when they die. You're gonna miss them when they're gone. And those phone calls, man, I love my daddy calls me just about every week just to check on me. And just to see how things are going. I just I let you know I was watching you preach. Hey, I'm thankful for a parent that cares. You gotta honor your parents and call them and love them. If you honor them, you won't have any regrets. Then uh, verse number three also says that it may be well with thee and thou mayest live long on the earth. God said he would bless us with long years for honoring our parents. I believe some of you here today honored your parents as a child. Why you say that? Because some of y'all have lived a really long time. Amen. Amen. I, and I believe that's proven. How many of y'all honored your parents as you were growing up? Look at all these seniors raising their hand in bed. <laughs> She's still a young chick and she raised her hand. Look, you know the reason you're able to live a long life? Because God blessed you. Mm -hmm. God blessed you. That's what he said. You'll give us long life. Kendall, if you honor mama and daddy, the Lord will let you live to be 105. <laughs> what you think about that? Yeah. They're like, uh huh. She's number like, well, what's 105? <laughs> we said, number one, I don't want to live to 105. Me and no. I had this conversation this morning. Number two, he talks about. He moves on from children and parents to specifically fathers and children. As we learned last week, who was to run the home? The father. The father, according to the Word of God. It's not according to my opinion. It's not according to a 2024 uh, survey. It's not according to what, some, it's what the Bible teaches. God does not change. This Bible was written 
uh, thousands of years ago originally, and it was continued to be written, and God uh, preserved it, and God's made it perfect. So it, it, God doesn't change. His beliefs are still the same as they were when this King James Bible was written. Okay? Look with me at verse number 4. And ye fathers. So now who are we talking to? We're talking to the fathers. Provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Uh, provoke not your children to wrath. That word provoke means, uh, a lot of people think it's playing or picking. You ought not to pick on your kids. Boy, my daddy picked on me till I'd get mad. I, I, they ain't what me. Ain't nothing wrong with picking on you, picking on your kids and taking dollar bills from them when they running around. Amen. The word provoke means to discourage them. Uh, you say, how do I discourage my children? Well, I've already touched on it a little bit, but we're going to talk about it some more. By saying one thing and, and doing, doing another. another. Yeah. You say, oh well, the Bible says that's wrong, and then they come in the church doing it. What do you expect? Mm -hmm. What do you expect? That's just like we had the kid on the slide when we were doing that. She she had cussed. And uh, I didn't fuss at her or nothing. I just said, don't you say that. And uh, her daddy said, well, not her daddy, but her grandpa, he said, she's with a rough group. I said, hey. you know, I mean, but you can't, you can't expect little kids not to pick up on what we Amen. say. They're like a sponge, and they're going to absorb everything. Right. That's why you shouldn't have roasted church members at your dinner table, because they're going to hear it. <laughs> yep. Or roasted preacher right. at the dinner table. Because yep. the kids are going to hear it, and they're going to come back, and they're going to say tell it. You. Yep. And then you wonder, well, where'd they hear that from? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we wonder where they heard it from. <laughs> okay? and, and I know they, hear, they pick up things at school, too, but they pick up a lot from mama and daddy. Mm -hmm. How do you think a child learns to walk, talk, and eat? By watching they got them eyes on their parents that whole time. child doesn't learn how to eat without watching its parent eat. Uh, here's another way. By always blaming and fussing and never praising them. Can I tell you, if you never praise your child, shame on you. And, and as a, a parent, if you never did sh uh, praise your child, shame on you. You ought to call them, even if they're adults, call them and tell them, hey, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. You know, sometimes that makes somebody, this just puts a pep in somebody's step. Be having a rough day and somebody just says, you know what, I see what you're doing. I'm proud of you. And, and you say, well, we don't do the things that we do for a pat on the back. You're right, we don't, but it still feels good. And it's still nice to get one every once in a while. Amen? Amen. That's why it's so important that we praise people. We praise uh, the children and say, you know what, I'm proud of you. If all they hear is negativity, all they're going to dish out is negativity. That's right. Another way is by being inconsistent in discipline. There's favor in the home, and I've seen it. I, 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 see, I, as a matter of fact, if I'm honest with you, a lot of parents won't admit it, but it's almost in every house. You get in that house and you watch closely, you'll see who the favorites are. Mm -hmm. You can see by the way they're, they're, they get everything that they want. Yeah. They ask for it, they get it. And, and you say, oh, I, I, well, I know a lady right now that's on top of my mind. She don't go to church here, so y'all don't think it's some of y'all. It's not really y'all. <laughs> she had two daughters, and there was one that she treated like royalty. I mean, she treated her like a princess out of... Uh, some Disney movie or something. And then the other daughter, she just treated her like trash. Well, guess what happened when the one daughter turned 16? She jumped ship. She got out. She moved in with a boyfriend. She ended up getting pregnant out of wedlock. Hey, you want to know why that happens? Because of some of these things that we're talking about tonight. Uh, and, and, and she ain't in church. She ain't serving the Lord. Of course, princess is. Princess is faithful. Princess... But that's because, you know, mama treated her that way. When you treat one better than the other, the other one's always going to be gone. Uh, I've seen it in, in my own household. I know what I'm talking about. Uh, the kids know whether you have a favorite or not. And you can deny it all day long, but they know it. And you parents ought not to have favorites because it ruins the home. Look at um, Jacob and Esau. Look at what happened there. Look at, um, 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 who's the other one? The one, Joseph's father. Uh, he treated him like a royalty. And, and all the rest of the boys got jealous and upset and they threw him in a ditch. Man, if I was one of them brothers out of jealousy, I'd probably want to throw him in a ditch too. It ain't fair. He get this... This coat, and he gets worshipped and praised while I'm out here working the field. and That ain't right. And, and all parents, if you're honest, at times you treat one child better than the other one, and it ought not to be that way. It ought not to be that way. Uh, another way another way to, to discourage your children is by making promises and not keeping them. Can I tell you, every child remembers the promise that you gave them. And I've heard it, oh, they'll forget it in a few minutes. No, they won't. They'll remember, and they'll remember, and they'll remember. And they may not cry about it, and they may not be upset, but deep down, it hurts them. Uh, it hurts them. You ought to keep your promises to your children, parents. By making light of your child's problems. Boy, have I, I, do I know of that when a child comes home with an issue. And, and how many suicides have happened? 
Because a child comes to their parent and they says, this person's hurt my feelings. And, oh, toughen up. You'll be all right. Let's be all And then the next week they commit suicide. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's what happens when you push it off as if it's nothing. You ought to, to, to uh, respect your child enough to sit down and talk to them and listen to what they have to say. Get down on their level and understand where they're coming from. Uh, not only that, but he must nurture them according to the verse number 4. Nurture them in the admonition of the Lord is what verse 4 says. A father must show love to his wife and his children. Can I say that your, your children need to see you and your spouse in love? It's good for that child to see that. It's good for them to see you give your wife a peck on the cheek every once in a while. It's good to see your, your children to see y'all being playful. Uh, that is a good thing. Because what that does is when they get older, they're going to see how a marriage is supposed to be. Yeah. If a marriage is always fighting in front of the kids, a parent, the, the kids going to marry and they're yeah. going to fight with their spouse. Yeah. Right. They do what they see. Okay, uh, Your children need to see you show affection to one another so that they can learn how to treat their spouse, spouse when they get married. How do children learn? By watching. We've already said that. They need love from their father and their mother. Fathers are usually the ones that don't show the love. If we're honest, we don't. Because we're manly, we're macho, we think, you know, toughen up, get over it, you'll be all right. Mama's usually the one that runs to little Johnny and says, it's going to be okay, let me put a Band-Aid on, let me do this, let me do that. And that's why we got 30-year-olds running to their wives saying, who put a Band-Aid on there, I can't handle it. <laughs> hey, honey, my mama wasn't there, you can't say that about me. I'm just full rotten. Yeah, you are. Yeah. <laughs> they need to see that love from their mother and their father. It's not enough just to supply the household with what it needs. That's what so many fathers feel like it's their job. It's my job to go to work. I'm going to drive the truck. I'm going to be gone for three three weeks, three months, and not see the kids and not see the wife. Man, I, I don't know how any man could do that. And I'm not bashing truck driving. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. But I'm the type of person, I couldn't be away from my wife that long. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. If we didn't have truck drivers, our country would be in trouble. Right. So don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But what I am saying is, make as much time as you possibly yeah. can. My daddy drove a truck for a long time. Trust me, I ain't bashing truck drivers. Somebody's got to do that job. But you ought to make time for your family. When you're gone all the time, and, and, you know, I mean, there, 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 there's, there's a void there that needs to be taken care of. Uh, it's just not enough to go and supply a meal and make sure that they're taken care of uh, physically. God looks to the home for proper training, not the public school system. Amen. I know That's that we're right. living in a time where they've taken, they've kicked God out, they've kicked the commandments out, they've kicked the Bible out, and now you've got a lost school system. The most of these teachers are dying and going to hell. They're lost as a, as a golf, golf ball in high weeds trying to teach kids morals and, and trying to teach kids what they ought to and what they ought not. It's not the public school system's job to teach morals. That's right. Remember, as a kid, man, they took... We had to do swish. How many of y'all did swish? Mm -hmm. Brooke, you did. Right, you did. Swish. That's where you had to take that. No, yeah. you went to Christian school. You might not have had to do it. You did it. Yeah. The, 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 Haley, did you do swish? Well, you, you took the, that juice and you had to drink it. It's mouth yeah. rinse. Once a week. That's what it whatever is. Whatever it is. Man, they had us do that. We had to do it for like two or three minutes straight. That was the most annoying like thing in the world. I hated it. I think some of y'all, did y'all take the tablets? Some of y'all done tablets. They made you know. Well, this is what public schools making kids do. I don't know if they do swish anymore, but that was back in the day. Uh, they they were trying to teach us health anymore. and trying to teach us uh, <clears throat> to be healthy. Now the public school system saying that uh, they're there, and they won't tell you this, uh, but they're passing out condoms to teenagers right. in the school. That's right. And they have, they according to them, they have the right to do it without telling the parent because they're trying to prevent. Uh, that child from catching a disease or getting pregnant. But the truth of the matter is, the best one, we've already studied this, but the best way to not get pregnant is just wait till you get married. Right. You ain't yeah. going to get a disease if you do that. You right. ain't going to get a pregnant until you're ready. Well, I don't know if you'll ever be ready to be pregnant, <laughs> but you know what I mean. But the school system, they're trying to teach morals. They're trying to teach this and trying to teach that. Hey, that's your job as a parent at home. Yep. You ever thought about why there are so many children that are so vulnerable and they're so willing uh, to, to, to do things with adults in the school system that they're, they're normally, that, that you never would have heard of back in your day? 
It's because parents these days are not talking to their children about these things. Yeah. It's not the school's job to teach them this. It's your job right. as a parent. That's right. You've got to talk to them. You've got to say, hey, if anybody does anything to you, you, you tell me as soon yep. as possible. Yep. You've got to be open about these things. And right. I know it's uncomfortable and it's unusual. But the truth of the matter, if you don't do it, something could happen to them. Yep. I mean, that's that's right. the day and time that we live in. Right. And uh, when we're quiet about these things, that's usually the ones that they pick. Uh, this is what's wrong with America today. Parents are not teaching anymore. They let everybody else teach them. They'll send them to church on the bus. They'll send them to school on the bus. They don't go to church with them. They don't go to school with them. Whatever they're being taught, oh, fooey, who cares? That ain't the way it ought to be. Parents ought to be teaching their children as well. The school's job is to teach your kids math, reading, science, and, and that's it. They don't need to be teaching all this other stuff that they're teaching. But it's the parents' fault because they don't step up to them. Okay, not only nurture them, he must discipline them. The word nurture also means learning through discipline. I think I missed one. No, I didn't. He must discipline them. That word nurture also means learning through discipline. It is your job as the parent to discipline, and the Bible does not talk about grounding and putting them in a corner. You know, I, I got all kinds of things as a kid. I, I, most of y'all grew up in a time where they just whipped you with whatever they had. My great grandma, man, if I've done something, done something, I'll tell you this. I'm gonna tell on myself. Can I? Can I? Can I let you know? I was, I was a fleshly, worldly little kid. We were riding down the road. I'm gonna let y'all hear some stuff about me. We were riding down the road. I was in my great grandparents' back seat, and uh, I thought it'd be funny. Kendall, don't you ever do this? I thought it'd be funny to flip the people off behind us. <laughs> you know, that would have been hilarious as as a seven or eight year old boy. You know. You say, I would have never done that. Yeah, you would have. Quit lying. You know, y'all, you, I know, I know. Y'all Y'all got halos. Yeah, yeah, funny. As a seven or eight-year-old boy, I thought that'd be hilarious. So I did it. And this man jumps out at the red light. Matter of fact, we was on Franklin Boulevard. I'll never forget it. This man jumps out of his car and he starts knocking on the window. And my grandpa didn't see him. My grandma said, was that you knocking on the window? I said, yeah, that was me. <laughs> and you know what kind of kid I was. I'm being honest with you. And so we, so we left. Uh, or the light turned green, and they pulled up. And then he got out at the next red light and knocked on the window. He followed us all the way home. Wow. And he told on me. And my grandma, when she wore me out, she wore me out. <laughs> she grabbed a belt. And she said, if I hit something, it's because you moved. She, <laughs> that's exactly what she And she wore me out for about five or six minutes straight. <laughs> Needless to say, I never did that again. Yeah, yeah right. That's right. You say, I would never do that. Yeah, you, yeah okay. <laughs> okay. I ain't no telling what an eight or a nine-year-old boy would do. Amen. I'm not always funny. When you see stuff like that on TV, what do you expect? Okay? But that word, and, and I, I would be put in the corner as a kid... With, uh, my daddy would put me in the corner and he'd have a dictionary in his hand and a dictionary in my hand. Anybody ever had to do that? I had to do cans. Cans? Like vegetable dictionary cans. is harder and heavier. Well, yeah. she had mercy on the girls. She did? Well, my daddy would have to stand in that corner and if I, and if I slip, bam. Yep. As soon as I slip, bam. Mm. My daddy had a paddle and uh, he tried one with holes in it. He had one that didn't have holes in it. And I remember one time, I'm talking about whipping your children tonight. Yeah. This is biblical. I'm going to show you to you in the Bible. Uh, he told me, he said, all right, pull your pants down. He was going to whip me. You say, oh, we ought not to do that in this day. It's going gonna, it's gonna to warp him. I'm doing much better now than I was when he whooped me, ain't I? Don't you think? I'm standing up here preaching to you. Standing up here leading a congregation of people. Amen. Up, I, I believe whooping helped me every once in a while. Matter of fact, I, I didn't get enough really and truly. I got away with a whole lot of stuff that they didn't know about. Amen. But uh, my daddy uh, said, pull your pants down. And uh, he said, bend over my knee. Well, I went to pull my pants down. And y'all know I was smart. Oh. I had about eight pairs of underwear on. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? That's when he said, I'm going to whip the bare bottom. So I had to take it all off, and he wore me out. Uh, you know, That's good. That's good. Uh, it's good. Uh, my, I, my, my mama, she, now this ain't good. She broke my stepmama, let's put it that way. She broke a brush over my head one time. That ain't right. You don't do that. No. I, I've been uh, whooped in all kinds of different ways. The Bible talks about uh, chastening your children. God put a cushion on your backside for a reason. Mm -hmm. and that reason is for it to be whipped mm -hmm. when it needs to be. Okay? Now, I believe in a good firm woman. I don't believe in beating your children and being mean to them. No. I don't believe that at all. But the Bible teaches us that we are to chastise, to whip our children. Look with me at Hebrews chapter number 12 and verse number 6. 
we got to go um, backwards, I believe, to get there. No, we'll go forward. I'm still learning my Bible. <laughs> as we learned Wednesday night. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 6. We'll give you two verses on this, and then we'll, we'll be about done. The Bible says in verse number 6, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. The Lord's not going to allow us to live any way that we want to live as his children. He will punish you. And he doesn't physically take a belt and wear us out. But he will wear you out to the point where you're ready to surrender according yeah. to the word of God. That's right. He says, if you do not feel conviction for your actions, then you're a bastard. That's a Bible word. Uh, and can I tell you, he also said, what man does not whip his child, whip his child. Anybody that does not whip their child is someone that is not showing their child love and correction according to the word of God. Now, if we go over to Proverbs 13, chapter 24, this is the verse in the Bible that is always misquoted. You ever heard this statement? You spare the rod, you spoil the, the child. Now, have you ever heard somebody say, the Bible says, if you spare the rod, you spoil the child. Anybody ever heard that? Mm -hmm. They're a liar. They don't know their Bible. This is what the verse actually says. Proverbs chapter um, 13. 13. Bible does not say spare the rod, spoil the child. That's a good statement. But if anybody says it's in the Bible, they don't know what they're talking about. They probably haven't read their Bible. <laughs> Verse 24. He that spareth his rod hateth his son. But he that loveth, loveth him chasteneth him be times. That means you're chasing him till he gets a hold of it. Many times. Daddy, sometimes when he'd whoop me, he'd say, alright, you're going to get ten licks. If, depending on what I did. And then he'd wear me out for ten licks and I'd cry and pout and I'd be mad and I'd say, Daddy, you don't love me. Daddy, you don't care about me. One time I told him, I said, I'm going to call Social Security on you. <laughs> That's what I meant to say, but I didn't know no better. He didn't know better. I told him I was going to call Social Security on him. He said, and this was his response. He said, you go ahead and I'll whip you till they get here. That's right. <laughs> what a good parent does. That's right. What a good parent does. Obviously, I'm not warped. I'm not warped. I'm okay, y'all. Yeah. I understand that we live in a time where they feel like whipping your child is going to warp them. The Bible teaches this. This is not me teaching. This is I'm teaching you Bible tonight. And it is this is everyday living, by the way. Amen. In households and homes. You ought to whip your children according to the Word of God. Now, if they do something simple, I don't believe they deserve a whooping for everything. But but uh, they need to be whipped every once in a while. And like I said, I got enough, I, I didn't get enough whoopings. I got away with a lot more than I got whooped for. But there's also times where I got whooped for stuff I didn't do. That's right. Uh, you know, that's just the way it works, kids. Amen. It ain't always fair. But admonition. That word admonition means to instruct and encourage them. It is your job as the parent to encourage your children, to discipline your children. And, and it's the kid's job's job to obey the parents, no matter what the command is. Amen. So there's a little teaching on raising children. Um, as an adult, as April comes to the piano, I'll give you a minute to. Um, we'll give you an altar call tonight. You say I don't have no problems. You ought to pray that no problems come. That's right. Uh, you, your home ain't as perfect as you as you make it out to be for everybody. And uh, I believe some of you seniors ought to pray for your children and your grandchildren and their relationship. Uh, because that's what's going to hold it. You know what held me for so long? I had praying grandparents. My parents wasn't always saved. Now, my older years, they had gotten saved when I was about 12 years old. But my parents wasn't always saved. It was my grandparents that brought me to church. It was my grandparents that taught me about the Bible. It was my grandparents that would read the Bible. My parents didn't ever do that. So some of you, some of you saints in here, you, you white-haired saints, you need to take care of those grandchildren. You need to love on them because they may not have a parent to do that. And you're, if you're the parent in the home, you are the one that is required to deal with that child. And, and these things that I'm preaching it is to you as well. It's not just to the parents, but it's to anybody that's raising a child. Everybody stand up, close your eyes, bow your head.